thank you for tuning in with us here at KLPWCK, the radio for Sister Sister. I am Raquel Arpender. Sitting next to me is my sister, Mary Isham, Mary T. Isham. It's a great God evening and blessings to you tonight. Thank you for tuning in and joining in with us. You can please do us a favor. I'm going to adjust the sound, the volume here make sure that we're able to be heard. If you can do us a favor, please um, share this out. Appreciate it so much. Thank you for tuning in and joining in with us. We bless God for you. Right place. Right. He's gonna make sure you do that. 
Hey, hey, my brother Michael Gibson, the white chief of evangelist lady LaDonna, and in the studio with us and on the um, on the broadcast, most certainly, prophetess and pastor of worship, Jasmine Isham. A few right. others I see there. Did I see Cindy Harris, the beautiful Cindy Harris over there? In, I think you're still in South Carolina, right? I hope I got that right. <laughs> even got it right. Great God, evening and blessings to you all. Um, we're going to talk a bit about the reflection of you. Um, we're trying to get situated. And we're going to end up getting uh, started before we get situated because we want to get into this and, um, and out of this fairly um, fairly quickly. Within, we want to be with, we want to stay within an, within an hour. And I'm on a timer. Lord Jesus, help me. Pray for me, y'all. She got me on a timer. <laughs> and I'm already not doing too good. Woo! Jesus. Please share. Y'all, please share. Um, and because uh, I won't be able to since I got to get started. Um, <laughs> let me get started with running my mouth here. Um, but, you know. As we go into this and we're reflecting, reflecting on what Apostle has been teaching about, one of the things that entered into my spirit, which is what brought this conversation about tonight, is our reflection, right? And I started writing down some notes and I want to share that. Elders Coleman, Alicia Coleman, great God, evening blessings to you tonight. Um, but yes, I was... Um, that is, that's what came to mind, and as it did, I began to jot down some things that's in my spirit. Michael said, I want to see this. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm really going to try. So that means I'm going to be talking really fast. Y'all going to see just how fast I do talk. <laughs> Tonight, y'all gonna see just how fast, uh, yeah, this is the can talk. So, here we go. So, the reflection of you, and as I um, was meditating and considering this, uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna do too much interaction with the comments because I gotta stay on, stay on task here. Um, I've been challenged here, so let me see what I can do. Okay, so, I consider this, I consider this um, as a baby, you know, when a child is born, um, after knowing, of course, that that baby is doing well, um, the baby is healthy, no pop, no um, issues, no. We, I'm sure we look for the for the fingers and the toes and all of that stuff. Um, having not given birth personally to myself, I'm just using my imagination. But I'm sure my sister right here, she's got a, a few of her own and some grandbabies as well. So she can definitely, um, she's definitely going to put in her her few cents on these. Quite a few, I hope. Um, <laughs> Uh, but when the baby is born, one of the th first things that um, people begin to look at, the parents as well as the, the grandparents, godparents, family members, start to look at, one of the first things we start to do is try to identify um, the features, right? Who does this baby look like? Daddy or mama? And of course, the daddy's looking and saying, oh, they've got my nose. Or the mama's looking and saying, uh-uh, those are my, that's my, that's my people right there. The nose, the eyes, and they're just trying to identify the features and we started looking for those things now as the child begins to to grow of course um, we start looking and of course we know children as a whole one of the things they're very good at doing is um, watching what you do and then imitating it um, but there's some things that children pick up because um, I, I can remember a time or two my mom telling me some things that I do that reminds her of my dad and I didn't grow up um, with him in being a constant in my life but yet still she was able to identify and say you do this just like your daddy does so there's some things that I would I would say and I don't know if you can yes or no um, that is just ingrained within some character traits and some um, behaviors mannerisms um, things of that nature um, there, there are some things of hers <laughs> that I picked up that I, I would have someone would say to me, girl, you just like your mama, yes. you know, she'll say in some things that I'm just like my dad. Um, but these are things that reflect yes. my parents, 
And so anyone that knows them, have had any encounter with them, been around them for any period of time, um, from the looks down to the displays, the, um, <laughs> the I'm just going to leave it at that, the, the displays, <laughs> um, can say to them who I belong to, where I came from, my habits, my practices, my probably even some of my little um, toots. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> um, can be attributed to yeah. either or. So am I Am I on it so far? Okay, so um, in thinking of that, you know, with, with our reflection, where we're looking at it at the natural, begin to look at it in the, in the spiritual as well. Um, and so when I'm thinking of that as it came into my spirit and we're talking about our reflection, who do we look like? You know, as a newborn, of course, um, we don't have the word in us, but we become his children. Right. And automatically, spiritually, we begin to, uh, someone's able to identify that the spirit of God is within that individual. But as we grow in Christ, um, we're supposed to take on more and more of his characteristics, yeah. um, which is, we go to the book of Genesis chapter 1, it would refer to me, I would use this saying, um, this is me using this saying, the image and the likeness of God. Um, we're talking about the reflection. Um, you look like your daddy. You look like your mama. Or you got features for your your daddy people. Or you got features for your your, your mama's people. Whichever. Do you have the features of your heavenly father? Do you have the characteristics of your heavenly father? Do you have the attributes of your heavenly father? Um, and maybe you can say that you have it, but can somebody else looking at you um, say the same thing? Can they say, girl, you sound just like Abba. <laughs> you can, will they say that you, oh my goodness, the way you just carry that out, your daddy would be so proud of you. Would they say that or are they shaking their head and be like, oh my God. You acting like the devil, right? So, so who is it when they look? Because again, when we start looking at the child, we begin to identify different things. Daddy, mama. We start identifying grandma, grandpa. But it's blood traits that we begin to identify. So spiritually, the traits within. Who do we recognize? And we gotta be we gotta be mindful of this. Um, and definitely want to begin to examine to see who are we reflecting because in all frankness if you're not reflecting him you are reflecting the other one there's no in between with this right there's no in between you either reflecting your heavenly father or you're reflecting the other one and if you're not reflecting your heavenly father, then your father is the devil. Mm. I'm just being real frank about it. We're not going to patty cake or nothing like that. If you're not reflecting your heavenly father, then you're not his. Yes, sir. Isn't that what we... Yeah, that's true. Because how many... <laughs> I know there, there have been those, because I've had some conversations with a few people who have been nervous, um, you know, because... Daddy want to disown the baby because the baby don't have no features of them. Yes. Now, Mama can't disown them because she birthed them. Right. No matter whether they have the features or not. But Daddy be like, uh-uh, die my child. Mm -hmm. I don't see no features of me. My daddy, my mama, my grandma, my grand, none of them. I don't see none of the, the, the features of my people. Mm -hmm. You show this mine. Yes. And then they start crawling for DNA testing yes. and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Questionability. So here's the DNA test, okay? Spiritual DNA test. Whose child are you? <laughs> I'm not being too bold and too frank oh, for you no. tonight. No, I hope not, because I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> but whose child are you? Who's Who are you reflecting? Who do you look like? Because when we speak of the image and the likeness of God, we're not talking about per se a physical look we're talking about the spirit of who you are the things that you do the way that you that you carry yourself 
we're talking about your conversation. We're talking about your love walk, your ability to forgive, covetousness, all of these things that the scripture talks about. Are we doing them? Because those things tell the story as to who child we really are. Our ability or inability to demonstrate them tells whose children we really are. Right? Right. Um, and of course, and, and I, I didn't get to jot this down, but you know, every now and then, and, and you can probably relate much better than I can. I've heard it a few times. <laughs> I've heard it uh, said a few times, but I, I personally haven't said it. But you would see a child doing something, perhaps even see your own child doing something, and you're in such amazement, shock, horrified, or whichever, and within you, you're like, Whose child are you? Yes. Okay, see, I'm in the house a little bit. You're wondering, whose child are you? You cannot possibly be mine. There's no way. You, you can't be mine. I, I, Because I, I didn't raise this. I didn't teach you this. I didn't teach you that. Not acting like that, right? Fine, too off, fine, too far off, right? I'm, I'm doing all right, right? Okay, okay. So, is your heavenly father sitting up above, looking down, and even though you say, I belong to God, he's looking at you and be like, whose child are you? <laughs> you don't act like me. You don't talk like me. You don't love like me. You don't forgive like me. You don't treat people right like me. You're not merciful. You're not forgiving. You're not kind. Is he looking down? He's like, oh, who? I didn't teach you this. I didn't show this to you. Where did you get this from? You know how y'all are. Is he perhaps doing the same thing? Or is he looking down? You know how parents are. You've been in this, part, this spot too. Where you're looking at your child and the accomplishments that they're making and you're so proud and you're like, yep, that's mine. You're not even giving credit to daddy because, wait a second, uh-uh. This is my child right here. I raised this one. I, that, that's every attribute of me right there. That's all of me. Yeah. No kind of no, no credit given to nobody else because you're so godly proud. Yeah. And as a parent, you're so proud of, yeah, they had some bumps along the way, some struggles, some trips and some fall and stuff like that. But even in that, you saw you. Yes. And you could say, yep. Yeah, Mm -hmm. That's my strength right there. Yes. That's my back right there, right? So, daddy looking down, is he saying the same thing? Is he saying the same thing? So, this is where I am tonight, and I'm about done. <laughs> <laughs> that we want to consider. We want to consider this. Um, who's, who are you reflecting? Are you reflecting the image of your heavenly father, God? Or is is somebody looking at you and thinking you 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 were the how they say the spawn of Lucifer? <laughs> they just know you were birthed straight from him. And we have to have this conversation because the, the truth of the matter is, and quite frankly, um this is an issue. It is an issue. You know, and just my encounter um, at times, things that I've experienced and encountered, it does make cause to wonder. And so I have to ask myself the question just because of encounters that I've had with other people. The experience that I've had with them is somebody else having that experience with me. Am I reflecting in that way to them? Because quite frankly, I've had encounters with people that had they not told me they were children of God, I wouldn't know that they were because of conversation, because of attitude, because of characteristics, because of the attributes on them. Yes. And so then it makes us, it should make us begin to look at ourselves and say, is that how I look? We dress up on the inside or the outside. We dress up on the outside, but what's reflecting from the inside to the outside is not a good look. It's quite awful. 
Um, and we have to wonder, God looking down and looking at his children, are we reflecting the image of him in our day-to-day -day walk? And we have to consider this also because we are soul winners, or we're supposed to be. Because he says, go out into the world and make disciples of men. And he also said, by this will men know that you are mine, by the love that you have. That's a characteristic, right? That's an attribute that reflects the image and the likeness of God. And so in order for um, us to draw, as he says, we have to also be displaying what he says. Are we? Now let's be honest. I'm directing the question to you. Are we? Are we? Honestly? Honestly. No. As a body. As a body, no. Not all the time. We don't. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just keeping it real. Let's keep it real. We, we can't overcome what we don't yeah. confront. You know, I like to say that. We won't overcome it if we don't confront it. Right. So we're not patty caking. We're not sweeping under the rug, none of that. We just going straight. I heard somebody say, put it where the goats can get it. Okay, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> Make it real plain. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, and I have to confess, even today, you know, somebody on the way coming home, driving and people drive crazy on the road mm -hmm. and, and I, I pray because you know that they can get out of my skin sure can and you got people on the road driving and acting crazy sure and can. somebody told me i have road rage let's be honest about it <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> not <laughs> you bro no 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 not my sister oh, no i just no 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 <laughs> That's what they said. That's what they said. I don't believe it. But they were mistaken, right? Yes. They didn't have the glasses on. Correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um But I've been there though. Yeah. I've been there. I had to be delivered. Yes. And I had to be delivered. Because I, I had, want a pretty little. Right. And so I had a thing and I had to catch myself about yeah, getting Character. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on. Just that quick moment it was about to take me into a, you know, a whole nother realm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I fear you. Yes. Yeah, so I, yeah, yeah, I, and see, these yeah. are the little things that we don't consider. Because who would think to even consider you're in traffic? Who cares what my character is? Somebody cut me off. Right. You know, they, they're doing, they're driving stupid. Mm -hmm. They're being crazy. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we're like, who cares? Yeah. But in actuality, <laughs> exactly. They don't know who I am. Right. And Apostle said this one time. He's like, you got to be careful even during those times because you may think they can't see you. And then you end up in church preaching one day and they walk through the door. You didn't see them. But they saw and you, you didn't think they saw you. But in they walk and they're looking at you like. And there goes your witness. They are, that door done closed, their spirit done closed to you because of whatever you said or however you, we acted or demonstrated just in those few moments. Mm -hmm. And it makes it, it makes or breaks an opportunity. It does. It, it, it really does. And you, it makes me think every day, like you said, it makes me think every day because of the fact that we're at work. Mm -hmm. So people are watching even when we don't think they are. On the job. Yes. Oh, so God. I have to be so mindful because, <clears throat> of course, thanks to my father. <laughs> <laughs> that tells everybody that I'm a pastor. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Some of them do that proudly. Yes. And he does it proudly. Proudly, yes. They proudly let them know. And so, you know, I have to be careful how I, how I respond to certain situations because, you know, I, I never know who's listening or who's looking. Mm -hmm. And because of the, um, because of, um, of, the, of the respect that I have on my job, right? I don't want to, you don't want to lose that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't want people, I don't want my character, you know, to be like taunted with me uh, acting a certain way. Yeah. 
Yes, because mm -hmm. people will try you. They will. They will try you. Mm -hmm. And especially if they see something different about you, yes. that you will be tested and tried. Yes. When people just notice, there's something different about this one right here. Mm -hmm. And come on, let's be honest and let's be real about this. Even the devil can pick up the Holy Spirit. Sure. Okay. Even he can identify when a spirit is true yes. and when that spirit is false. Yes. And so if he sees that this is the spirit of God, he gonna try you. Because now he's got to destroy your witness. We gotta pay we have to be aware of that as well. He is set out, steal, kill, and destroy. So he wants to destroy the opportunity for you to be a witness and to taint your image in the eyes of other people. And of course, you on the job, that's another place we probably don't consider our witness, yes. but should. Absolutely. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. We certainly, certainly do. We look at our family as being ministry, um, but we have to consider also that those that we work with, our, our co-workers, those are ministries as well. You may not pull out a Bible. You may not have Bible study with them per se, but there's opportunity to be a witness just by the things we do, our interactions with them, the things that we allow, the things that we disallow, and there's so many other opportunities just with coworkers. Yes, it is. Every day, I remember too. I remember too. I shall remember. They will test you and they will try you. Yes. Coworkers. Um, Clients, all on, on on both sides of the counter, you will get tested and tried. Um, and still, the image and the likeness of God should be seen, and that's the important thing. Um, and I I really believe that when we know and understand our purpose, um, that also helps us in the image that we portray that the, the character that we demonstrate when we understand also who we are. Uh, Michael Gibson uh, made a statement here, a comment here about um, when we're like our leaders, uh, if he is demonstrating the Father's behavior, and that's our Heavenly Father, if he's demonstrating um, that behavior, then that's okay. And I agree. Um, that's why Apostle like to say, follow me as I follow Christ. Most certainly. You know, if, the, if you know the person is not demonstrating the attributes of God, they're not demonstrating that they have the spirit of God. Sure. You're accountable. Yes. You can't say, well, I follow the but, but you knew he was wrong. Yeah. Intercede and pray for him. Don't tell, and, no, yeah. Not telling you whatsoever to come up against him. That's right. Because you can get yourself in, 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 trouble. in trouble with God um, by doing that. Intercede and pray for, him, for them and follow the leading of the spirit as it relates um, to them in what you do and what you say. But most certainly when you have a godly leader, that's your example. Yes, that is. That's your example. So most certainly, I agree with you, Michael. You see, I'm doing good with time, am I? Am I still good, doing good with time? <laughs> all right, all right. See, the clock is winding down, the clock is winding down. but. Um, we want to begin to look at that and you guys can most certainly I, I think I've gotten all of my all my key points out so I can look at notes and, and refer to some of the, your comments and things of that nature um, but I think that's so important for us during this time and in this season and in our walk um, in times past it has not been um, necessarily put uh, importance on I was trying to figure out how to say it. Um, there wasn't importance put on it, in, or emphasis, thank you, um, put on um, our image and the image that we're portraying. But when it comes to when it comes to the Word of God, that's what we are portraying, His Word. Whether and whether or not we're portraying it speaks of whether or not we're obedient to His Word. And we can take it to the scripture where he talks and he calls for us to be obedient. He says to obey my laws. And believe it or not, the characteristics of him that we're supposed to be demonstrating, they fall in line with his laws. 
Am I right? Am I right, Apostle? <laughs> Y'all can tell me what you think, but they fall in line with his laws. He says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's a command, which is a law. Right? So when you're not walking in love, you're breaking a law. And if you're walking in love, walking in love will demonstrate itself in many different, um, many different ways. Because walking in love will cause you to exercise temperance. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Walking in love will cause you to walk in forgiveness. Yes, that's true. Walking in love will cause you to be gracious and to be merciful. Walking in love, and, and he did say this, I'm going to let you talk because I see you, you, you make an indication you got something to say and we want to hear what you guys say. Um, but he said this in the scripture, Jesus himself said this, he says, all other laws hinge on these two right here, that's loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. All other laws, that means if you love, your, if you love them, you ain't trying to um, transgress against them you're not trying to um, covet yes. what's theirs including the husband or the wife yes. uh-huh so none of them other things uh, what they have what they have right so oh come on patience they helping me out now <laughs> but all the other laws hinge on those two laws because he's saying basically if you seek to do these right here, everything else is going to fall in line. Because the love that you have for a person, you won't want to do anything to intentionally bring harm to them, to mistreat them, or do any type of thing that's going to cause them any type of discomfort whatsoever. And to be honest, and do, let's be frank too. Um, you don't have to know your neighbor. So just because it's saying neighbor, we had this conversation before. Um, neighbor isn't just the person that lives next door that has a number that's off or one or two numbers from yours. Right. A neighbor can be in Timbuktu while you in Jabim. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> they really can. That's true. They can be across the nation somewhere, who knows where and they still be your neighbor, you never laid eyes on them, probably never spoke to them, but maybe one or two times perhaps. But when you come in contact with them, you still demonstrate that love that you have for yourself towards them. Love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, you would still treat them the way you want when he says it you. And that's why I and that's why I'm able to understand all of the laws hinge upon these two because if you treat somebody the way you want to be treated you don't want to be mistreated you don't want to be abused you don't want to be taken advantage of you don't want all of that junk garbage and all that stuff being thrown at you and so if you put that in there you're not going to do it to somebody else I'm going to choose this Go ahead. <laughs> you won't do it no you won't so we can understand when he says all other laws rest on those. Go ahead. Well, I was just—I wasn't going to say much. Uh, I was just going to say, talker. I got time now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got all that. Also, it causes you to be. Um, I, well, I find for myself it causes you to be humble in mm -hmm. situations. Where, where you know you want to mm -hmm. say something, right? And you should say something, mm -hmm. but you just like right on that tongue. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I could I, say, but I don't won't say it because I love you. Yes, that mm -hmm. part because I yeah. I've caught myself a lot of times. I'm like. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, <laughs> for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. Uh, yes, we have to. Um, we have to, like you said, we have to be careful. Um, on the things that we do and say because um, um, just an incident that happened at work. This lady called, she was so rude. I mean, nasty. 
to the tenth power. Mm. To the staff. She said the tenth power, y'all. Yes. <laughs> Woo. She was so rude. I mean, and I'm like, and they was like, Mary, can you please help us? And I'm like, okay, let me come on the phone. So I was like, you know, introduce myself. Mm -hmm. And I said, how can I help you? She's like, wow. That's about, I don't know. And I said, well, can I ask you what my speaking to? She said, Reverend such and such. I was like, Reverend?
that we wrestle not against flesh and blood and though that that individual that's demonstrating is demonstrating in the flesh it doesn't mean that we should respond in the flesh we recognize that that's a flesh fleshly act but we also recognize that there's a spirit in operation behind that flesh and that's one of the things that we don't bear in mind um, when we look at when we are faced with situations we don't identify hey I'm dealing with a spirit here we're not even thinking about that on the job in the mall in the shopping center in no other place we're not on in the no, certainly not in traffic you're dealing with a spirit <laughs> we're not identifying that we just we gonna get down with the get down but in getting down we're destroying our witness we're also um, tainting the image, the reflection that we're supposed to be reflecting. We're tainting that. And we want to be mindful of that, that we begin to identify, how do I, how, how do I, you're asking the question, you may be asking the question, how do I um, bring myself to where I'm demonstrating the characteristics of my Heavenly Father? Well, that's where spending time in the Word of God becomes very important. Spending time in His Word and spending time in prayer um, begins to build these things up in us, begins to develop these things within us. And Holy Spirit being, being you know, when we, when we pray the prayer of salvation, we ask Him to fill us with, with His Spirit, His Holy Spirit. Well, Holy Spirit, in their working, along with the Word of God, when you're reading that word, he helps you to identify um, attributes that is an issue. Because I know he did it with me. He still does it with me sometimes. No, a lot of times. <laughs> he still does it. When we come across things in the scriptures, if that's an area that needs to be worked on, that needs to be cultivated within you, he'll, he'll speak to you on it. That thing will prick your heart. You'll, it'll bring conviction to you. And then, of course, you go where he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's where the renewing of the mind becomes necessary. Because now he's revealed to you that some of the attributes, some of the characteristics that you're demonstrating is in direct conflict with the characteristics, um, the image and the likeness of God. And if we're really wanting to please him and we're wanting to be his children, when the Holy Spirit, when Holy Spirit begins to reveal it to us that this right here, you don't look good. That don't that that's not right for your complexion. That's not right for who you are as a son and daughter of God. That this is not the way you're supposed to look. This is not the way you're supposed to carry yourself. This is not the way you're supposed to behave. When he begins to reveal this to us, our job now is to get it right. When he says, your attitude is messed up, you, you got to do something about your attitude. Do you think you, and sometimes he'll do it to you right there as you're, as you're having an interaction with someone and your attitude with them is not good, and he'll check your spirit. Some of you, some of us, we feel it. Now, we may not respond to it right away. It may take you a minute to respond to it, but he does. He lets you know, you know, you're not even acting right. This right here is so wrong and you start to try to calm yourself down, you feel yourself trying, real, recognizing, oh my goodness, I don't even, I don't even like the way I'm handling this situation, and you're trying to figure, get yourself out of it now because you're, you're feeling convicted within yourself. That's Holy Spirit working to show you, to reveal to you, this is not the characteristic of God. This is not the image of God. This is not the likeness of him. You don't, you're not demonstrating the attributes of God. And he's giving us opportunity to flip it. Giving us opportunity to change, to turn around. And so then, of course, it's for us to move in obedience to what he's showing us. What he's revealing, what he's exposing to us. Right? So... When you're wanting to know, am I demonstrating, am I reflecting the image and the likeness of God, go into his word. Go into his word. It's all through. <laughs> it's all through the word. You know whether or not you're holding unforgiveness.
forgiveness. You know whether or not you have a judgmental attitude towards everything and everybody. You know whether or not you can't find a, a good thing to say about the person that you know. You know if you're always negative about everything and you're always tearing somebody down, whether or not you're coveting. And when, when we talk about coveting, this is going to be a whole new broadcast all by itself. Just to talk about coveting. Because we have a whole lot of, um, what do we call it? Um, trying to live up with the Joneses, keep up with the Joneses. That's coveting. Let's call it what it is. Keeping up with the Joneses is covetousness. You want to be like them, you want to have what they have, you want to drive what they drive, you want to live in what they live in, coveting. That's what that is. Anywho, that's another broadcast, another day. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> All right, sis. Okay. <laughs> but it's an attribute that is not of God. And that's, where, that's what we want to be mindful of. That's what we want to be aware of. Okay, um, so that's that's it for today. Anyway, I think that was a good start. What do you think? I think so. Good and start. Really good. All right. Hope y'all feeling all right. I didn't cut nobody. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think I cut nobody. We doing all right? Y'all still there? Y'all still alive? And well and kicking? Okay, good. So if you're there, if you you know that. You probably had a few ouch moments, something this, and um, you're just desiring that the Lord continues to work in you. You want to get to that place. We just get, I just given you, giving you some quick instructions, something really quick to help you get in the Word of God. All right, and He begins to reveal to you um, to, to get there real quick because you can go. I can tell you start from the book of Genesis, and yes, you'll find a lot of things in there. Um, but to really get on it, Jesus himself, as he walked the earth, he taught, and we don't, we don't per se say it this way, but as he was teaching, he was teaching about the characteristics of God. He was speaking about the images and the likeness of God. If you began to read it, you would recognize that that's exactly what he's talking about. When he talks about love, when he talks about forgiveness, when he talks about not being offended, um, when he talks about all of those things, helping, being helpers one to another, when he talks about being a light, okay, he's talking about the image and likeness of God. So if you want to go to the New Testament instead of the Old Testament, Jesus talked about it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, <laughs> you were John. Actually, a lot of John. <laughs> Begin to he tells us exactly about the image and the likeness, the reflection of God. Now he doesn't specifically say this is the image of God or this is the reflection of God. Um, but Holy Spirit, you have you have the Spirit of the Lord in you. He will help you to identify. This is exactly what he's talking about. There was a situation. Let me let me throw this one. There was a situation dealing with a woman that was caught in the act of adultery. Okay, and of course they the the lawmakers and so forth. Um, seek to use her as an example um, for one thing or another um, but he saw that as an opportunity to of mercy they wanted to bring judgment con they wanted to bring condemnation judgment and kill the woman but he saw it as an opportunity for something else to extend the grace and the mercy and the love of God towards her by um, forgiving her and giving her another chance right and there are uh, other such instances throughout that as you read you will come across them and they will help you now you can go through um, the rest of the New Testament and there are different things that's laid out about our love walk about walking in the fruits of the Spirit um, all of these things are images and likeness the reflection the image and likeness the reflection the attributes the characteristics of our Heavenly Father because again if you are not if you say that you're his that you belong to him and that's that's your daddy you should look like him and if you don't look like him then I'm scratching my head and I want to know who is your dad <laughs> and I'm saying it in that way but I'm talking about your Heavenly Father your spiritual father if he is yours, if he 
if you are his and for him to own you because you know we have some that will disown their children we were talking about that that's why they want DNA because they, they, they're about ready to disown them because they don't look like them they don't have no features do you have features of your heavenly father hmm. let's do some self-examination Let's do some reflection. You don't have to tell me. Between you and Daddy God. Daddy, do I look like you? Do I sound like you? Do I act like you? Do I talk like you? Is my love walk lining up with your word? Am I being compassionate, loving, gracious? Something to consider. Now, if you are there and you're listening, uh, and of course, as you're hearing this, um, you're hearing many of the attributes. I, I've laid out a few of them, the attributes of, of our Father, but you recognize that you do not have relationship with Him, so you can't claim Him as your Father. But tonight, as we have been conversing, um, the desire has been birthed within you to know Him and to seek relationship with him, to receive him into your opportunity tonight. And to allow him to begin to develop within you so that you begin to reflect his image, his likeness in the earth. That you would receive him into your life today and into your heart today. scripture lets us know that if we confess with our, our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead that we can be saved and when we are saved we become his he becomes our father and then of course it makes it it makes it possible for us to walk like him and talk like him demonstrate his characteristics and begin to um, reflect his image and his likeness. So if you're listening um, and Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart and you want to receive him tonight, I just want you to say this prayer with us. Glory to God. And then once we say this prayer, I'm just going to give you a few instructions. Um, prophets will say a general prayer. And then we're, then we're going to say good night. If you pray this prayer with us tonight, say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Wash me and cleanse me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew within me your spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for my sins. I believe that you have risen from the dead, and one day you will return. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I am yours. And you are my God. Thank you, Lord, that I am saved in Jesus' name. If you said that for tonight, we believe with all our heart that you have been born again. I want to encourage you to find a place of worship where you can be taught the word of God in truth. Continue to develop in this walk and begin to demonstrate the image and the likeness of your heavenly father. I pray tonight that God will lead you to the place that you need to be. I'm gonna give you a few instructions, just a few. But if you can do me a favor and 
just send us a message here at on this on our platform, KLPWC Kingdom Radio, Holy Hill Churches Worldwide, Kingdom Living Prophetic Worship Center, or Daughters of the Kingdom. Either one of those platforms that you may be tuned in on, that you can send us a message and just let us know. I gave my life to the Lord tonight on this day. When you do that, we commit to praying for you. Praying the Lord's will, purpose, and plan for your life. That you would come to know it and walk it out to the glory of God. In addition to that, here goes the, uh, the instructions that we would give you. I want to encourage you to get yourself a Bible with all the electronics and all of the technologies that we have and with, you know, internet being the way it is, you can download a Bible to your device. But if you're like me and you want to have the pages that you can turn, I have it downloaded, but I still like to flip the pages. Let me tell you. <laughs> By all means. However you do it, my encouragement to you is that you get yourself a Bible, begin to read it, begin to study it, you get in the Bible and let his word get in you. As you're doing that, as I prayed just a few moments ago, that the Lord would lead God and direct you to a place, a, a place of worship, a ministry, where you can be taught the word of God in truth so that you, it will help you to grow and develop in this walk. So having said that, I want you to find a ministry and a leader that you can submit to that will pour into you the Word of God. Help you to understand the things that you're reading and what you're studying, helping you to know that you are on the right track. Be open, let me say this, be open to correction because if you're going in the wrong direction, that leader is there, equipped to bring you on track. If your understanding of what you have read or studied is incorrect, that leader's responsibility is to give you the right understanding, interpretation of what you have studied. If you have questions about what you've been studying, what you've been reading, that leader is there to answer your questions. I like to say it this way, and I'll use this as an example. An individual going to, to university, and they're going to college because they want to be a doctor, they want to be a lawyer, they want to be an accountant. That teacher is there. Even though they have the, they have the book themselves, they have the handbook, they have all the literature, on the, in the field that they want to go into. But still, they have to go to university. They have to go to trade school or what have you. So that someone can help them to make sure that they're getting the right understanding and the right interpretation and that they're practicing it according to the way it was intended. As it is with that, so it is in the body of Christ and as it relates to the Word of God. So that leader in that ministry is like your professor in a university, in a college. That's what they have become to you. Making sure that what you're reading and what you're studying, you're, in, you're translating it correctly. So that you're not doing surgery when you should be practicing law and vice versa. My final instruction to you tonight, develop a prayer life of your own. There's nothing wrong with having others connect with you in prayer, and there's nothing wrong with asking others to pray for you. I do it. So there's certainly nothing wrong with it. But God wants a relationship with you. He wants to hear directly from you your needs, your wants, your desires, your complaints, your what have you. He wants to hear it to you and he wants to be able to communicate with you. When you develop a prayer life, you open the door 
of communication between you and your father. You don't want a one-sided relationship. He doesn't want a one-sided relationship. He wants a relationship where the two of you commune with one another through your prayer life, through your reading of, this, of the word, your relationship with your leader that helps you to make sure that you're understanding that word. The relationship with God is forged and strengthened. Prophets, do you have any additional instructions that you want to give? Anything you want to add to? No? Okay, so I guess I did all right. Okay, so we're going to have you do a, 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 a general prayer. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, Father, as we close this broadcast, we ask you, Lord, to walk with us everywhere we go. Help us to keep your word in our hearts that we may not sin against you. Yes, Lord. God, we ask that you will help us to remember the characteristics of you. Yes, To show love to others. Yes. Wherever we go, God, help us to mind the things that we say. Yes, Lord. How we react to situations. God, we ask that you would keep us throughout the rest of this week. Yes. Cover us in your blood, God. Yes, Lord. And even for our brothers and sisters that's on the broadcast, may this word bless them in some way. Yes, Lord. We pray, oh God, that you will bless and that yes. your will will be done. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in and joining in with us here tonight. We pray that you have been blessed by this word, um, that it causes you, it provokes you to, to think and to consider um, within yourselves. Are you reflecting the image of your father? Who do you look like? Who do you look like? So tonight as you uh, take those thoughts with you, most certainly, as you meditate, pray that the Lord God himself reveals himself to you um, and that you're able to find yourself in him, that you find yourself demonstrating the characteristics of him. But even if you don't, all is not lost. You're still alive and well and you're still breathing. So that means that you have opportunity to get it right. You have an opportunity to get it right. And tonight is a good night to start. So we want to close out tonight by saying this, according to the word of God, it says, I give you peaceful habitations and quiet resting place, that when you lay down to sleep, that your sleep will be sweet. Good night, my friends.